so it's preparing to live stream but i think it might already yeah. be doing it so we're going to just kind of hop in yeah um, so everybody welcome to jen's pen live we are yeah. talking today with mel howard dobson and mel, here. <laughs> mel uh, is actually in lisbon right now um and she helps women reorient in loss and life transitions and let's have a little talk about that yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> so, well, tell, us about yourself. tell us about your background how you got into what you do and what you do okay um so i think the first thing i really want to say because it's it becomes so apparent to me how much my language as a as a an individual um in this body um i am very energetical i seem to talk in language that revolves around energy and i think i just uh accepted that <laughs> from quite a young age mm -hmm. i've gone through awkward phases of teenager where it doesn't feel like many other people do <laughs> um but then you know i just got used to that and that's fine and then i went to drama college and anything went so that was good <laughs> that's something you and i have in common exactly it's exactly. exactly. a great exactly. place to be <laughs> <laughs> but it's curious because um what i wanted to say first was that I remember being extremely small and um, having a seizure. And I think there's something that stayed with me in that. I really do believe that I am a human being, but I am, I'm a spiritual part of something bigger than me that's in a human body having an experience. That's my preference. And some people might feel more drawn towards being a human being that sometimes may have some spiritual experiences and they're just sort of different aspects of the lens aren't they in a sense the different lens yeah. um, I'm on your side <laughs> of the page there though oh okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and so um so getting back to being small I had a seizure and it was very curious to me as I found out when I got older it was very briefly spoken about um that it was because I was hyperactive and that was kind of what how it was described to me as the story well you were hyperactive and your mom was struggling um and I, I wasn't told at that time that she was struggling with postnatal depression but um, mm -hmm. um it all came about by some marks on my teeth that um apparently could have been linked to medication from that time it's just curious information but as I got older, I started to sort of think about that as a sort of a late teen. And I was like, well, this is very, very curious because I can see that I would be hyperactive if my parents were struggling very, very um, intensively, which they were. Um, I remember seeing my mom um, really struggle with a psychotic episode. And I was maybe not quite three and just feeling very scared, sat on the floor on my own. Um, and so, of course, I'd be hyperactive, basically. <laughs> that makes it makes so much sense to me. Um, so I got into energy very, very quickly in that way. And I think how I used to cope as a child, I was an only child, and I would play and create scenes and everything was about the body. And I became a dancer, which is great, because that's how my, I would move my energy and work with that. So the reason I bring that in is because it's very much now linked to my work because I really feel I, I have a very intuitive, um, very, uh, it's intuitive and it's, I can see in and feel other people in a, in a, in a very tangible way and it can be very useful. Um, uh, kind of just traveling up the up my timeline <laughs> if you like although it's not been linear it's kind of gone <laughs> um, it's been curious that um i started i left drama school and went off on a tangent went this isn't for me i know i'm doing it for my my mom specifically more than um maybe in, <laughs> she would like to hear that but anyway it's true and i remember being on stage one night and thinking who the heck am i doing this for it's just not resonating mm -hmm. and so i left everything and I studied in Feng Shui and started working with energy and really starting to see how our environment can support us as well as, you know, how we can in our own body support ourselves intentionally or with awareness. 
Um, sorry. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> no worries. No whackers. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's quite fascinating that we use energy for focus and we use energy in intention and um, how emotions can impact us. I believe, you know, can cause either distress or can feel very harmful to ourselves, let alone to what, you know, we might actually put out, throw out or not be involved in and withdraw from. There are so many different aspects being a human, aren't there, in our experiences in being who we are. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, I started to really get into a lot more intentional um, awareness and focus with energy. Mm-hmm. Um, moving down the line, I then started working in mental health and spent over a decade on acute psychiatric wards. And I think that my soul did that, I think, from losing my um, grandmother and really um, realizing the impact of not only feeling what I felt in response to um, a member of my family, a dear loved one, very abruptly passing and dying. Um, I went on a bit of a travel journey off to India for six months and really questioned a lot of things. And it brought me back to um, creating more intention around how I can feel more alive in myself as well. Mm -hmm. And that became very apparent that it's been a real thread through my life as well. And I know there's a lovely saying about staying close to anything that makes you feel alive. And um, I think that's been a real through line in me. Um, My very first song I ever wrote and recorded was called Alive to Love. And that stayed with me as well. It's um, Mm -hmm. it's just very much seems to be around intentional focus towards life, aliveness and love in that sense. Um, so I started working on psych- psychiatric wards, and yeah, that certainly helped me in, in a cathartic way, as well as a very, very rewarding way in community, supporting people through very challenging times. Mm-hmm. And I spent a lot of time working mindfully, creating relaxation. I've been training as a, um, a, a what I like to call a transformational therapist, doing a lot of specific body work that was empowering, getting people to think about how they would like to feel. And I would work very much with five elements, earth, fire, water, air. And my movements were like a dance. I would be dancing with that person's tissues. And Mm. that's how I would honor their, what their experience was, what their life meant. Everything that was happening for them was their business. But Mm -hmm. I was there honoring their tissues and it was an exchange. And so that's been a beautiful exploration alongside working in mental health and working with, with breath and learning to get into the body. Um, because I really find in my own states of struggle that I also have so many times cut off from my body when it's felt too much, when I've not wanted to really dive into certain emotions. And that kind of brings me on to the, just the, the simplicity of energy in emotion. Emotion is energy, energy and motion, isn't it? It's Um, it's just... (laughs) It's, it's quite phenomenal and the amount of things that I've done to avoid the energy that I know is there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the havoc that can cause and the impact that can have by fighting. It's almost like this little child fighting. I don't want to feel that. It's just too much. It's too scary. And a fear that I can't hold that for myself. And that's actually not true either. Mm-hmm. And it kind of links beautifully in its orchestration as far as I'm concerned maybe not in the moment (laughs) but looking at it from a sort of a view around that that sort of 360 view degree view of you know the constructs that happen when we are doing our very best as a child to fit in to belong to be loved to be seen Mm. accepted and all of these constructs that get built around that purity of beautiful energy and essence of that that gorgeousness of child that's growing and expanding and learning and growing Mm -hmm. and then usually curious constructs of protection and safety and the intelligence of them which is quite spectacular 
Um, but then, you know, as time goes on in life, I know for myself, I've definitely thought, you know, I don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> and I can find another way. And so in my own experiences of struggle in miscarriage and in um, separating from a previous partner and, and now in my own fertility journey, which I've decided to let go of, there's been a lot of exploration for me to really, it's gifted me um, a real opportunity to become so much more present to different things that I know are happening for a reason as opposed to happening to me and that it's for me. And mm -hmm. I really, I really believe my soul has orchestrated some of this quite phenomenally. Um, and I say that because when I was, I think about nine or 10, there'd been a discussion with my mom where she said, you know, don't, don't have children early on in life and have lots of boyfriends and don't settle down and all of these things. And it almost felt like, oh gosh, I better not do any of those because she won't love me anymore. And I just remember clocking that in my brain. Um, and I went away and a few days later, I remember sitting in a room, whatever I was doing, and it wasn't the me sort of that sort of child construct coming in. It was something else. I can't explain it apart from a deep sense of knowing in that moment. And it was like soul was speaking to me. And I sensed and felt that I knew in that moment that I would struggle to have children. And I cannot put it into words, that experience fully, but I knew that was what I was here for. And I sort of it, cognitively or the body, part of me knew it and went, oh, okay. And it felt like it was choiceless. And I remember forgetting it. <laughs> it's like the paradox. I was nine or 10 and it wasn't until a little bit longer, sort of like a couple of weeks after miscarrying, I remembered that, that particular moment. It was just quite phenomenal. Um, whether that's me making meaning of it, I don't know, but it just came in. It came in as sort of a conscious flow. And I just thought, oh, goodness me, after all these years, that's curious. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, where are we in this conversation? I'm kind of <laughs> talking about the energy thing. <laughs> your fertility journey and yes. your experience. Of, I yeah. mean, that's that's one kind of manifestation, almost. You know, I mean, mm. like having that conversation with your mother, having that like thought that just came from somewhere else, mm. and then years later, having what happened to you happen to you. Do you do you want to? Do you have more to say? about that yeah there's something quite specific in there because you know i i do believe i've done a, a brilliant course not long ago um with a, a gentleman called shazad shaman called positive intelligence which works specifically very intentionally looking at where our inner brain our judge inner brain the inner voice in our brain our inner judge which we all have narrates and talks and causes havoc and chaos and there are many different um, helpers along with the judge that can sabotage things that we love and desire all of that and um, it was just so brilliant and it's it's really stayed with me and I, I do support my clients who I, I help now to take a look at that and to get inquisitive and to get curious about it because it can be so useful and one of them that supports the judge is the victim <laughs> and the reason I bring that in is because it, it's really gifted me this whole journey of seeing, yes, I had that memory and it was, I forgot it, but actually my soul along the whole of my timeline, if you like, or the way my journey has been, there has been so many opportunities for me to step into my power. And I think what the beautiful gift is seeing that at certain points I didn't, but now I can. But in those point, at those points, I was doing the best I can. Right. And I can, the distance of that and seeing it from a much more compassionate place means that I can see I wasn't in my power with that. Okay, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And it, it's been what it's been and life's moved on and life's happening. Um, but it, it's always an invitation. And I find the more I learn about my body, the more I connect dots around how I communicate and what's important to me who I really am and, and staying in that truth 
speaking from there and learning how I can do that much more embodied in my body. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of being into me, see, into myself, I see. That's intimacy. The self-intimacy is such a beautiful thing. That is really nice, yeah. It's it's lovely, isn't it? And so if I'm more intimate and I'm seeing more and feeling more and getting to know me more, that trust and honesty then allows me to see past those constructs and to see past what I think is true when it's absolute rubbish. <laughs> you know? And it's like, okay. <laughs> and then in that, I can feel so much more love in myself as well because I'm more comfortable in my skin. There's more of an openness. I can receive more. I'm not closed and in this sort of um, resistance and fight, restriction, contraction, control, wanting things my way when it's not going to go that way. Good luck with that. (laughs) (laughs) All of this stuff, you know? And so it's, I talked about dancing with tissues earlier. And for me, this feels like it's dancing with life. And to me, Mm -hmm. that, that is the richness that can help through, for me, through grief when it's been really bloody tough um and feeling like it's not going to end or feeling completely swallowed up or frozen week after week you know all of these Mm -hmm. kind of things that can come up which maybe through very old shock as a child and something that was very overwhelming and at that point I didn't have anyone to turn to which quite often I didn't actually Mm -hmm. and so there can be a lot that's unprocessed that's hanging around in the tissues. I think that's why I love oxytocin, the chemical in the body from what I got as as in massage and um, as a hypnobirthing teacher and doula, I spent so much time teaching couples about the complete beauty of oxytocin that happens in being in a protective space. And that same thing can happen protecting and, and creating that protective space here now as we are as an adult and we can grow that in ourselves to hold both love and fear or challenge of feeling defensive or anything we can hold both sides of this I know it's not always just black and white but we can hold that spectrum you know yes frustration to anger we can we can learn to let it move through the through the body and so yeah Yeah. I was I I don't know how we're doing for time but I was going to just great yeah we're good Uh, mm -hmm. yeah I was going to mention a couple of things that can be really helpful if anyone um, finds that it's just a challenge to get in touch with their feelings or um, if feelings feel very overwhelming. Um, the most beautiful and important thing, there's a poem that's just been spraying around like crazy by a, a wonderful poet called Joe Rodell. And he writes about the body when they don't talk to each other anymore between the heart and the belly. Um, and the heart and the brain and how they divorced each other and the struggle and the poem beautifully describes going through different parts of the body that just didn't feel right and eventually he was the the gut told the gut told him to go up to his lungs in the poem and at the end of the poem the lungs said open the open up and say what took you so long and it's just the most beautiful that is beautiful yeah, um, and I'm not even obviously saying the poem, but it, oh, it was just, I totally felt viscerally everything he was sharing in it. Um, and that's just taken me in a daydream. Daydreamings are so good for you, I really believe. So that. good. I just really it's, discovered that. So underrated. <laughs> started doing that again for myself recently it's like oh my god I forgot how awesome daydreams are it's so true isn't it it really is yes a breathing that was it so um I studied with a wonderful guy in Barcelona to do with breath and keep up keeping the idea of breathing simple you know there's been some phenomenal yogic teachings over the centuries and I think for some and myself some breathing techniques can go into depth and it's like well what do you do with that and is that a good thing to do in that posture blah blah blah. and I just like to keep things simple and do things that I intuitively go to that feel good um more often than not I know some are very good intentionally to practice a specific way I totally respect that um but Lucas Rockwood was one of my teachers and the first thing he we, we did was we learned 
box breath and it's a count of four breathing in and then a count of four breathing out mm -hmm. and it's a, just a very naturally easy um balancing breath basically um and it's so simple to remember um and the reason I bring that in is just simply because it helps our nervous system. Um, if some people feel that they naturally become a little bit anxious where the body's speeding up, they have palpitations at times of tingling in the fingers, sweating, heart racing, then um, simple breathing routines can be so great. Um, so for anxiety in that sense where rapidness is happening, with doing, 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 more to cope with something that's happening it's really good to breathe in say for four and breathe out for six or eight counts if you can and sort of mm -hmm. learning to slow down the breath on the out breath yeah and keeping it simple um and for somebody who maybe feels like they're so overwhelmed that energy is just gone you know it doesn't seem to be there there isn't enough to sort of get a hold of and, and move forward in something it can be really good to sort of learn to or allow invite into the body breathing in a little bit faster and more regularly for sort of um 30 seconds breathing in and out faster just to get the body moving i would say in that situation it's great to dance just to dance get some music on shake your booty get your feet in the ground get that earth felt under your feet go outside in good weather and have bare feet and earth earth to heck earth the heck out of the earth and, love it. <laughs> and just let the breath come in from whatever is coming through the lungs just filling up in that and just shake just let it all go through it's just such a we have this amazing vessel that is so wise and has all of our stories all of the all of the bits that we see is good all of the bits that we see is bad but it is all energy it's all part of our innocent beautiful self that's had this phenomenal journey and we uniquely respond to things and we re uniquely resist to things you know yeah and that's that's what makes us who we are and i feel the more we can put our arms around some of these visitors that feel difficult or challenging mm -hmm. and just give them a little bit of a hug and it's okay for that particular visitor that day if it's <laughs> really peed offness or really <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever yeah. the uncomfortable emotion is yeah. exactly it's a great thing to just see what it's what it's offering or what it might be now wanting to be heard from ourselves and only we can do that we can go outside all we like listen to all this story listen to all this but if that person doesn't receive us the only person who can is us and if we don't start in with that then it's going to be a difficult, difficult road. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think, I mean, exactly what you're saying, I kind of bringing it full circle to the beginning of the conversation is these, these walls and everything that we've built up around ourselves that where we've separated our head from our heart, from our gut, from our lungs, we mm. have all these things that inhibit us. And even the suggestion of maybe like going onto the earth with bare feet and dancing and getting it all out, yeah. that might be difficult for somebody because they, yeah. you know, they are so, they, a lot of people don't give themselves permission to do things like that. They see them as yeah. silly or frivolous or, or whatever, um, and don't actually realize the amount of freedom that they can achieve from doing something like that. How would you, yeah. how would you coach someone mm -hmm who had those sorts of walls up, who, who, who were, is looking to be more free, but can't uh -huh. seem to give themselves that sort of permission. Yeah. Um, well, I would, <laughs> I would start off with, um, it can be very different and it's obviously very specific to a person's a person, experiences yeah. and life. Um, but it can be so beautiful to simply put a piece of music on, and just see where the body feels it. If there's a piece of music that they really love, and if there was something that they could feel, just a little sense of something somewhere to follow that, whether it's in the foot to toe tap. Mm -hmm. And then to maybe just play and go, oh, what's it like if I tap my foot a bit more? And what does my knee do? And, and to make it an exploration, I really love to see and, and share that people are the most beautiful 
artists in terms of their body could be the most exquisite paintbrush that can create the most exquisite, beautiful portrait or picture in any moment. Um, and each paintbrush stroke depends on where their body is and what they're feeling, what comes, what doesn't. Even in stillness, there is still something that's happening. Mm -hmm. And just those little movements, always an invitation can, if there's a curiosity that can happen, to just think, well, just to explore, well, is there anything there? I've never really thought about my elbow very much. Or I've never really thought about the, the side of my thigh. <laughs> you know? But maybe the body's got something to say and it's not until the invitation and the permission to play and to mm -hmm. be more in the childlike mm -hmm. realms of curiousness. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that sometimes if there's a lot that feels like it's very held in the body, it can be really good to shake it and maybe not go to dancing. You know, if there's a lot of movement, if there's a lot held and say there's a lot of anger, it can be very curious to get, it can be very um, challenging to get curious. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's better to just totally be with what is there right there and then. And, you know, in, in a coaching space, I would hold somebody in what, whatever's happening for them. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the honoring of where they're at. And for them to have the permission to see how powerful that can be, honoring themselves where they're at, and that it's okay. And most importantly, I find when I'm working with women, not making anything wrong at all. It's just like, <laughs> none of this is wrong at all. It's absolutely, totally okay. It's normal. And what's happening is, for me, I always find it very beautiful obviously it's not always the thing to say but it just is what's happening and that's fine um so so yeah it could be a mixture of inviting something in and seeing what wants to move look feeling with the eyes closed into somewhere um if people feel safe enough to do that it can be a really beautiful exploration with the eyes closed to to listen to that as in a life moving and energy flowing and to see it that way as opposed to with the eyes open can be very different. So I do a lot of um, intuitive, I make them up on the spot for people because it just seems to be my natural arena. And I love guiding people in visualizations um, and exploring what the spine feels like and bringing imagery in. And that can be very powerful to begin with. And then bringing elements in of, well, let's, let's see what the body wants to do. Now we've shaken a little bit or now we've been you know, breathing differently for a while. How does that feel? What are the sensations? And then seeing what the body might, what the body might do. It might be that it wants to stretch or find their own personal boundary of where they are and where the world begins. There's so many opportunities of exploration. Um, but I find it so helpful when someone else is there to guide in that. Yeah. It feels absolutely paramount to, to really, really explore and feel good doing it and safe doing it. Just have that, that guide there for it to, to be um, a very integrative, a very, um, an experience that can be really felt consciously and very clearly. And then from that, an integration might happen with a new way of seeing something it might be weeks later you know once something has moved through the body goodness something might come later down the line and a dot, dots can be joined and, oh yeah wow I noticed this now mm -hmm. and this changed it's a beautiful new jewel that's been you know it's come up from the mud and it's grown and it's, boom this flower's come out and given this beautiful new awareness <laughs> yeah. yeah no absolutely i mean what you're saying about it living in the body the emotions living in the mm -hmm. body they really do you know they're stored in certain areas and yeah. to be able to shake them loose it is is an amazing thing to be able to do because it's it's on the way of, of letting go of some of that stuff right it's mm -hmm. it's on the way to letting go of it and that's not something that happens often overnight and it's something that it takes a while to digest and, mm. and really see 
how it starts integrating itself into your life. So that, mm. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm just finishing editing. It's been a while, but um, six months down the line, I'm finally getting to the end of um, a book that I've written, which links into some of what we're talking about for younger women to to really find out much more about their own sensitivities and their own ideas of um, what's, what might have shaped them that they may not have explored before in terms of how they view their body, how they, they um, respond to the world from what they were shown or given or particular things that were said to them linking to being a young woman and looking at where shame may be hidden um, or elements of blame and victim and how that may be impacting them. And it specifically relates to their bleeding cycle and bringing a new awareness and creating um, a ritual. And so the book takes women through rituals as well to if later in life they've never honored when their bleeding cycle began, if they didn't have that support and a, a real nurturing um, rite of passage into womanhood then um, this book is sort of a journal and workbook and an exploration and guided visualizations to bring that into their life if they wish to and to, to birth sort of rebirth elements of femininity that they can enjoy and, and, and receive for themselves now, no matter what the timing of where they are in their life. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that feels really, um, if it, it's all interlinked, I feel like Blade Runner interlinked interlinked <laughs> have you seen that film if you haven't you'll think i'm a nutter but if you know blade runner I'm a massive have, yeah. fan. interlinked <laughs> interlinked <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah that's so. amazing because as women we are taught so much to like even just be disgusted by ourselves you know for something that's such an it's such a i mean it, clearly it's yeah. the most natural process that there is yeah. you know if we're gonna it it yeah it's that that's a wonderful wonderful book to bring into into mm -hmm. being because women really were taught we're taught to just completely cut ourselves off for, you know what I mean like it's a it's a it's an inconvenience it's gross it's mm -hmm. whatever it is you know and, and it, it just I think a lot for a lot of people the idea of thinking of honoring it mm -hmm. is is a new thought you know like oh what what are you talking about <laughs> yeah maybe you know? for some women or you know some generations or cultures you know that yeah. there is there's so many layers there isn't there that could there are gosh, I mean e each gonna... layer would be a conversation wouldn't it it's <laughs> every single one of them <laughs> I mean from yeah. honestly from the beginning of civilization we have records of different like go away from the tribe <laughs> you know what I mean that sort of stuff just pa being passed down throughout society that's I mean that's so really well, there was, yeah there was a real twist to that because it was actually a very honoring it was honoring woman to have that intentional time together because they knew how sacred that timing mm -hmm. and her intuition and psychic and when I say psychic obviously the psyche offers our unconscious offers a lot of wisdom we feel that in our dreams we see it in our dreams you know and it can inform us so in community I, I'm, I can't get specific on specific area, you know, countries and tribes and mm -hmm. um, indigenous peoples. I would not want to um, make something up or oh, be incorrect. <laughs> so, right, right. But I have read that, you know, there has been very specific um, community that would revolve around women. I mean, woman was revered for so many centuries yes, before, yes. before certain times of out. Christianity <laughs> and the... Right. Um, the, the threat of the power that women have held in, in a lot of beautiful realms. Anyway, that's another story. That's but, yes. um, <laughs> Where we, can, we can come back many times to discuss it because I, I yes. find that very fascinating. Yeah. Um, but I think it may be in Maureen Murdoch's book, um, The Heroine's Journey, that it okay. is spoken about, um, that community and rites of passage were how elders shaped the next generation. And in my, my lifetime, in my culture, North Yorkshire and England, um, 
I didn't have any rites of passage and I would have loved that guidance. I've had that longing for years and looked for it and found community eventually to experience what that might be like and how it might look yeah. and have my, my role in that. Um, so women would go off and it was an intentional space in lodges so that they could work in their own feminine power and their own community, if you like, within the community every month. And the elders women, the elder women would support young women who were coming into Menarch um, specifically to learn about the, the power of, and, and the, um, the, the almost like gateways, the different gateways of working with intuition, working with what bleeding would mean and how by resting in the stillness of the body, the psyche really could be revered and wisdom would you know it comes through and and I know when I'm in stillness and not pushing through my bleeding cycle there's a lot of wisdom and different information different aspects of my psyche that um, become so clear that happens for me and I know as a child my psychic abilities where I would intuit things about people would be much more prominent as a teenager around my bleeding cycle it took me a long time to recognize that mm. But as I learned more and, and heard from other women, it became very clear that, yeah, that's where that comes from. And that's my, I, I feel that in my bones. But it, it did at some point become um, turned for the good of perception in the patriarch of, well, that it's dirty. We'll put, you know, that was actually because we didn't want them with us because of whatever X, Y, and Z. But mm -hmm. then the story was, was, was moved around and turned around for the wow. benefits of how often in certain aspects of patriarch it's it's been a belittling and shaming and yeah all of that story another thing to control yeah <sighs> but um yeah so <laughs> it's been such a cool conversation we have to do it again i am so looking forward to looking at your book <laughs> thank you so why don't you um <laughs> i'm gonna start coughing <laughs> why don't you tell Sorry. us how to get uh in touch with you well, yes, <laughs> please do, please do. <laughs> um, so I um, I will drop my Facebook group link that I, I've just set up a new Facebook group. If anyone is curious about joining community um, that is specifically linked for any form of grief that may maybe um, is a fairly new um, experience for you, or grief even from years past. Um, I wanted to link in grief because it's such a big part of life. I mean, we're all going to die. <laughs> I know that's quite, <laughs> quite a, you know, there we are. Nice sentence to say at the end of our conversation, but we are. <laughs> and it's a big part of, it's another taboo in a sense. And so I seem to be drawn to uncovering taboo specifically with women because once we are more in touch with our bodies with ourselves we show up differently and that can help how we show up with our children with our our partners and that ripples out and I just think the more we are in community as women together witnessing and being received being heard and seen in difficult experiences of life whether it is in death whether it is in infertility whether it is through miscarriage whether it is through loss of a loved one um, grief comes through in so many different ways whether that's a very big loss in life like that or whether it's changing a job our children leaving our leaving home you know fl fly flying from the nest I was going to say fleeing that's interesting <laughs> <though>. <laughs> Flying the nest. It didn't sound right. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it's been doing Portuguese today and I'll mix everything up. Um, anyway, so I I will drop a link if that's okay, Jennifer. That would be cool. To so my new Facebook group. And people can um if they want to explore something and they're looking for support more longer term over sort of like a 12-week period and would like to work with me around getting more in touch with their body and learning about boundaries and how to really learn to stand behind what's important and be able to engage in a different, healthier way, which connects as opposed to pushes things away. Um, then I offer a 12 week program now in this 
called in your power. Um, and I can drop a link to my, my email because I'm busy building my website and getting all my pages ready for that. Um, but you can jump on a call with me. So I'll put a link to Calendly and mm. people can jump on a call and ask questions. I'm really happy to do that. I love connecting with people and finding out what's their challenge and what they would like instead. So I'll do that in the link. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for spending your time. Pleasure, with Jen. This has been so much fun. I enjoy talking to you so much. Me too, you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. And we will stop the live stream now. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>